The Outlaw John Roca here. Welcome to the Outlaw Nation and this fun video all about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, this brand new MCU film coming out this weekend from Marvel and Disney. And don't worry, there'll be no spoilers in this video, just some information so you can look cool when you're talking to your geek buddies this weekend in the theater. Oh, oh, are you noticing my jacket? Oh, yeah, that's right. This is a Shang-Chi jacket, official Shang-Chi jacket that I got from Disney. Thought I'd wear it to do this video and have a little fun. First, let me kindly remind you all before we get going to subscribe to the channel. You hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that bell button down below, and it'll let you know when we're dropping all the new content that we do here on the channel. Trailer reactions, reviews, pre-produced videos like this and live shows as well that we do daily and weekly here on the channel. Okay, now that we handled that business, let's get acquainted with this incredible new character entering the world of the MCU in its 25th movie. It's so great to see Marvel and Disney still looking for new and interesting ways to expand the world of the MCU, the universe of the MCU. First off, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings was targeted very early on in the production process by Kevin Feige and Marvel as a film that they wanted to put all their best efforts behind and one they saw as a tentpole big budget origin movie that would be an early highlight of phase four of the MCU. They heard the complaints from the fans about how the Mandarin was presented in Iron Man 3, the cast Casting up Tilda Swinton as the ancient one in Doctor Strange, and even some of the complaints with the Iron Fist series. Even though Iron Fist did not connect up into the MCU, it made down the road, but not this series right now. But it had the Marvel logo on it, so certainly there was an accumulation of some issues going on here. And I think Marvel and Kevin Feige and Disney became very aware of this and wanted to have a better approach to a film like Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which of course is the first Asian-led Marvel superhero film. They knew they had to get this film right to win back maybe some of the Marvel fans, but also build some bridges back into the Asian community of fans who were enjoying these movies as well, but were a little uncomfortable with some of the portrayals or casting of some of these typically Asian characters of, out of the comic books. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, as I said, is the first Asian-led Marvel movie, and although the Chinese community is highlighted and is central part of the film, the cast itself, screener Dave Callahan and director Destin Daniel Cretton have Asian backgrounds from China to Malaysia to Hong Kong to Singapore to Japan to India to Canada and to America even. So Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is a strong and inclusive representation of the Asian community when you look at the cast and the production team behind it. And speaking of the cast, it's full of young up-and-comers, actors coming into their prime and established veterans who bring their A-game and give the film a modern feel while also conveying a respect and deep appreciation for the past. Simi Liu, who tweeted his casting into the universe a few years ago, brings a real everyman quality to his portrayal of Shang-Chi that the audience will connect to immediately. He's noble, respectful, loving, funny, and fiercely protective of the ones he loves. And even with all the chaos that swirls around him as the film goes on, he still finds moments to show his natural ability to care for others while also making some funny observations and a perfectly time double kick but he's also made decisions in the past with his family that are now coming back to haunt him he has struggled between his father's ways and his mother's lessons and must now put that struggle to bed once and for all so he can walk his own path and find his own voice in the world legendary hong kong actor tony leung plays wen Wu, shang chi's dangerous and powerful father he brings a mixture of tough love and confidence to wen Wu, but also provides the occasional chilling reminder of how deadly and remorseless he can be when he chooses to be and this causes some problems between father and son that we'll revisit later on in this video the equally legendary michelle yao is here as ying nan a family member who lives in the fantastical world within this movie offering shang chi a new perspective on how to view the dueling influences of his mother and his father in his life. Manger Zhang is in here as Zai Ling, Shang-Chi's sister. She brings a controlled, confident, and grounded approach to her character, and one that yields dividends during her fights in the ring and the upcoming war with her father as well. And Aquafina, of course, Aquafina, one of the highlights of the trailer. She brings her unique mixture of comedic timing and dramatic skills to the character of Katie Porter that earned her a Golden Globe nomination in 2019. Katie 
She is struggling to commit to walking one path in her life, much to her mother's chagrin and her friend's judgment. In a recent interview, Aquafina enjoyed that the movie took this approach with Katie because it was, quote, a conundrum that a lot of Asian Americans find themselves going through. Well, not just Asian Americans. It's yet another way that this film appeals to moviegoers on a universal level. We all have that parent or parents or friends who want to backseat drive our lives. Katie's family plays an important part in that role. And let's talk about this theme of family, which is really prevalent and an important part of this movie, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Both the family he finds with Katie and kind of co-ops and his actual family in his own life. Shang-Chi certainly finds a way to navigate both of those situations and try to repair one of those situations using the strength from the other situation. This is something we see in the Marvel Universe. If you look at Thor, if you look at Iron Man, if you look at numerous characters in the MCU, there are issues between father and son. There are issues sometimes with mother and son, brother and sister, or mother and daughter even. But here we have a unique family on so many levels. First of all, Wen Wu is this man who possesses the Ten Rings and has lived for centuries and also finds himself in love with a, with a woman of incredible power herself and, fan, and who lives in a fantastical world. And they birth two children. And both of those children are incredibly powerful in their own ways as well. Shang-Chi we've seen. And Shai Ling we will see in the movie where what the extent of her power actually is as a fighter and as a skilled assassin herself. So you look at this situation and there's fractures all over this family between father and son, father and daughter, brother and sister. And I feel in this way, there are connective tissues for those of us who've had some issues with our own families in life. And we can sense a connection with Shang-Chi and the journey or Zai Ling and the journeys they both are going on. And when you look at Katie's family, you see the judgmental aspect to it, as I said, but it's always coming from a place of wanting better, wanting better for Katie, wanting better for Shang-Chi. He, in essence, has replaced his actual family with Katie's family, the way he deals with Katie's grandmother, the way he deals with Katie's mom, all of that, you sense a respect for the community, the Chinese community, but also respect for this family. So that's a very important part of this movie. That I think a lot of people are going to enjoy as well. Now, if you want to kick out with your friends, you can talk about the fact that you know that Shang-Chi was created back in 1972 by Marvel and made him the son of Fu Manchu. He was trained by Fu Manchu and his secret criminal organization to be a warrior with a mastery of both martial arts and the philosophical concepts of war in an effort to groom him to take over his father's criminal enterprise when the time was right. But Shang-Chi, which stands for, quote, the rising and advancing of the spirit, rejected his father's wishes due to some outside forces, showing him the true nature of his father's business, and he struck out on his own to forge a new path as a Marvel hero. Shang-Chi in the comics has fought alongside Spider-Man, Captain America, Falcon, Moon Knight, Daredevil, and the X-Men. He's been a member of both the Heroes for Hire and the Avengers. With this rich history in the comics, you wouldn't blame Disney, Marvel, Kevin Feige, or Destin Daniel Cretton for just adopting Shang-Chi's story from the comics straight up. And while the movie does borrow a little from the comics in terms of the fractured dynamic between father and son and a father leading a criminal organization and a son needing to break away from that, not wanting to follow the path of his father... Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings absolutely strikes its own path in portraying this character of Shang-Chi and his background. Yes, Shang-Chi does break away from his father at a young age on his own, moves to San Francisco, and he's there for 10 years by the time the film starts. So we see that in retrospect with his character. And during that time, he's been kind of trying to figure out who he wants to be. You know, you know we've seen him get trained by his father and the criminal organization to become a warrior, to accept the philosophical disciplines of war and also have him train his chi with his mother which we see in the trailers there as well and that conflict has really decorated his life so when he broke out or when he breaks out it's these next 10 years that he is like catching up on all the time he didn't have being a child being a teenager having some fun navigating his life so when we find shang chi at the beginning of the movie he's a, he's working as a valet parking cars he goes to karaoke bars with his best friend katie he hangs out uh, with his friends and he's just floating and living life with no real purpose or direction 
And just because you're done with the past doesn't mean the past is done with you, as we see in the trailer and you'll see in the movie. When Wu sends his soldiers, his skilled assassins, to go and get Shang-Chi and Xi Ling as well for his own nefarious purposes. And this is where we get these incredible fight sequences by Andy Chang, who is the, uh, the fight coordinator for Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings. He has worked with Jackie Chan on a number of films. And a lot of people have already noticed the jacket move that we see in the trailer uh, Simu Lu do as an homage to Jackie Chan a lot of these fights will absolutely bring Jackie Chan vibes into your mind but it stands on its own the coordination of those fights the fights themselves the sequences they are definitely standing on their own even with the homages the bus fight sequence which we've seen sampled in the trailer already is actually way more extensive in the movie and will blow your mind and the fight sequence that's teased in the trailer on that scaffolding outside the building at night is jaw-dropping. I mean, there's so much happening in this fight sequence, spanning multiple levels on that building, both inside and outside that building, and some great moves, some great timing, choreography, all of it combining to leave you with an un unforgettable experience when you watch this fight sequence. And yeah, again, there are some Jackie Chan references, but that fight sequence stands on its own. So you've got fight sequences, a great story. You've got a damn good director in Destin, Daniel Cretton, an incredible cast. Well, as if you need another reason to enjoy this movie, then give some love to that soundtrack. <laughs> soundtrack is just chock full of incredible artists let's go through it real quick lazy susan is one of the first ones that's been one of the first tracks that's been released here by 21 savage and rich brian which features warren hugh and my c way this is just a lot of people already talking about lazy susan but to add to that you got act up by rich brian featuring the earth gang foolish by rich brian then you got lose control by jj lynn run it by dj snake featuring rick ross and Rich Bryant, In the Dark by Sway Lee, featuring Janae Aiko. Then you've got Baba Says by Ottawa, featuring Shai Ting L and Henry Lau. Warriors by Warren Hugh, featuring Saori. Clocked Out by Audrey Nuna, featuring Nikki. Escape by Beckon, featuring The Donuts. Never Gonna Come Down by Mark Twain, featuring Vivi, which I really like. Fire in the Sky by Anderson Pack. Swan Song by Saweetie, featuring Nikki. And Every Summertime by Nikki. Also, there's tracks by Bella Porch and Kevin Wu. So, so much going on on that soundtrack. And Joe P. West, that score is really one that'll stay in your mind as well. I mean, it's very close to the feeling I felt coming out of the theater that I had when I watched Black Panther. So I'm not saying it's my, I'm not saying it's on that level. That's up for you all to decide subjectively. But I say there are definitely connections and feelings I had coming out of Black Panther and wanted to immediately buy the soundtrack for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings when I left my screening. So you've got so much here to enjoy in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. As I said, an incredible cast. Destin Daniel Critton, a fantastic director, of course, made his bones on Short Term 12. He makes the most out of a film that spans multiple continents. It's a big, big film with a small story about family told in an epic scale and one that I think you're thoroughly going to enjoy. Fight sequences, the score, the soundtrack, all of it combining to make an enjoyable experience for you as a moviegoer, as a fan of the MCU. And I think this is a character that a lot of people are going to make their favorite character very soon, which we've already seen being tweeted out by a number of people who went to early screenings of Shang-Chi. So uh, take it from me, the outlaw, John Roca. You want to go see Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings this weekend when it comes out. Have yourself a good time. Enjoy connecting to the universal journey of this character of Shang-Chi and the path that he is walking and the obstacles he is overcoming so he can find his own voice. And how many of us can connect to our own journeys in our lives as we found our own voices as well. All right, well, let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments section below. Remember to like this video as well and share it on your social media. When you share it, you're telling friends and family that this is a place they can come and enjoy great content from the Outlaw Nation channel. And speaking of the channel, please remember to subscribe to the channel down below as well. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button. That's how you know when we're dropping all the great new content we do here on the Outlaw Nation. And if you want, head on over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca. Come and follow me there or support what we're doing there uh, on the Patreon and enjoy all the perks that you get with being a part of the Patreon. And if you're a Twitch person, head on over to Twitch, the Outlaw Nation, all one word. Subscribe and follow me there as well. And on my social media, at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. And my podcasts, the Top 10, the Cinephiles, and the Geek Buddies, 
out there for you to enjoy as well. And you know the Geek Buddies are going to be doing a spoiler review on this movie for sure. We already did our non-spoiler review, so if you want to check that out, it's out there on the channel. All right, take care of yourselves, be well, and enjoy Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings this weekend. We love you. You got this. Thank you. Thank you.